I like that. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Hey. I like the way Jeanette did that real slick. I still was I was like, hello. Hey. <laughs> I, said, I love the way it says it now. So, oh, because I can just push this and it'll, it'll get there. Too. No, I'm like, who's that lady talking? I'm going to re-record her voice. Anyway, <laughs> hi. Hey. 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 How's it going? Good. Welcome back. Welcome back. Episode 42. Yay. And today, this is our this is unscripted, y'all. So get ready. We know how. Our heartbeats love some unscripted, and we do too. This is like our best. I'm laughing at Shauna. Just looking at her face. She's like, yes, I'm ready. Yes. Jeanette was like, bring it. Okay, so today <laughs> we're going to talk about life after marriage and dating again. We, we, you know, we talk about different things. We've touched on relationships. I think one of our themes is love and relationships. And then in this one, we're talking about giving love a second chance. Right. I think, you know, we've all been married before, been divorced. And I think this topic could resonate with our with our heartbeats and our listeners. So I was really excited to see this and more importantly, it being unscripted. So not hey. that we're not relaxed <laughs> on all of our episodes, but this is like feeling a little bit more relaxed. So, <laughs> so go grab your tea, your favorite beverage, whatever you want. Sit back and enjoy this ride. <laughs> all right. Ooh. So who wants to, what'd you say, Jeanette? Jeanette wants to go first. Oh, okay, okay. That's what, I know. That's what I said. Jeanette, Shauna is ready. She's so eager. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was like, nah. They I'm already ready. starting, y'all. They already I know we start. <laughs> we already started. We already. This is already. If this wasn't unscripted, it wouldn't be by now. So. <laughs> hey, well, in that case, who wants to start, Shauna? Letter J becomes comes before S. Yeah, and I'm in the middle. Yes, I love it. Still Beauty love it. and age before all. So go ahead, Shauna. <laughs> we, I can't the ups, deny. The ups and downs. <laughs> yeah, I threw that in there, Linda. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's tweetable. Yeah, hit it with that's tweetable. Mm-hmm. She said that's tweetable. Listen, that's tweetable. We always <laughs> tweet. I'm tweet. always like social. Oh, like, ooh, social media. Okay. Wow. All right. What's the question? <laughs> <laughs> this is taking me back to episode 17. <laughs> All right, so I guess I'm going to kick it off anyway. <laughs> yes, you are right. Exactly. Yes. Okay. All right. So the question is, right. So we all, we've all been divorced. And Shauna, we know you've recently lost um, your late husband, Lorenzo. Um, so in that process of ending a relationship whether it was wanted or unwanted like what was your thoughts around like if you would date again after that relationship coming out like when you think back to like when it was ending and it's like oh yeah so for me with divorce I know it was I ain't never doing this shit again <laughs> <laughs> what about y'all mm. so my my situation like uh, it was short lived, so it was less than a few months, and so it was what they called a null. Mm-hmm. And so, my situation—I was in a situation where it was just um, uh, definitely should not have happened. But um, you'd have to read more about it in my book because I actually married someone else before I married my husband. So coming out of that, it was like, I, I knew I was going to marry Lorenzo eventually when he was ready, because that was part of the problem, but you have to read my book to understand <laughs> how that went down. Um, but it turned out, as you can see, a beautiful uh, love story. And so, and now that he's gone, um, it's been two years now. So still thinking about the whole like dating scene because it's scary and it's been how many years since you like, like dated, dated since he pat oh no, since you've been oh like, thinking, gosh so ready together to 24 he's been gone for two years so 26 years well, dating mm. is like completely different it's completely different now <laughs> yeah <laughs> like technology is different and we, yes. have to, we can talk about that a little bit later but like how technology makes dating a lot different now mm, i love that yeah um, 
So Linda, I mean, Shauna, it did. So the first situation, it sounds like it didn't scare you away from. Yeah, not from love. Or what you knew what you really wanted. It was just more confirmation that, mm, no, I yeah. I want it, but just not with you. There's somebody yeah. that I definitely <laughs> want. Yeah. You described yep. that perfectly today. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> What about you? Because you're not getting uh, on the hot seat. I know. Well, I hot I seat, the baby. Mm, yeah, for me, I was probably the opposite. I was like, oh, one and done. You know, I, I got married. Um, we were married, <laughs> what, 15 years? 15 years. And then we were together 18 years, married for 15. You know, Miles and Madison were born during the, during the time we were married and all that. And, you know, when things went left, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm done. Like, I don't want to do this. I, I stayed single for four years. I was, I was what I call the one date wonder. So I, I dated, I went out like on one date. If something, if an eyelash looked crooked, I was out. Bye. I was go, doing my own thing. <laughs> she was Eddie Murphy and Boomerang. Yeah, I was like, yes. Yeah, my feet is too big. I know it's yeah, crooked, crooked exactly. eyelash. No, nope, no, nope. crooked like, eyelash. I'm like, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. And you know, then four years, I was single by myself, just doing the things I was, you know, working. I wrote my first book, you know, all the things that I just wanted to do. And then I met Stanley, and I was like, oh, okay, we yeah, all right, you know. And six years later, here we are. So yeah, I never thought that you know I would date again because I was like I'm I'm wow. good and it's still you know it's still some level of like you know you protect yourself but then there's the healing process that you go through too. So my me and my ex-husband it'll be 10 years in January. And I would say, you know, things have, you know, progressed to be better over the years. The kids are older. So you, you know, you you co-parent well, which people always say, y'all co-parent so well. I think that was part of the healing too. But yeah. <laughs> giving love a second chance, that was not in the plans because mm-hmm. I was not trying to do all that. I enjoyed my single life. You know, it's just, they, the kids went with Mike every other weekend and that's just what I did. But then things changed. So ups and downs, yes. <laughs> the one hit date wonder, yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, you know, as far as like committing to be, so I did not commit to be with anybody in that four years after we split because I, re- I just refused to. I think I was just scared, you know. Yeah. For me, like I, I can say, I was not. I was like, I'm not doing this. I'm not. <clears throat> and then, like, so me and Corey, we were together prior to my last marriage, and you know, we were engaged. It didn't work out. I left, moved back to Philly, and it was like seven, eight years. We didn't see or speak to each other, like zero contact. Mm. And um, if it, and I say this all the time, if it wasn't him, I probably would still be single right now. <laughs> <laughs> because like it was like we were young so like I knew and we talk about journaling like I, I think I, did I did I mention this so I have a journal from like when we were together he hates it because it has like all the good and bad from when we were young in there mm-hmm. but like the last entry about Corey Brewster was if um it's meant to be then we'll find each other find our way back to each other sometime in the future and that was the last thing yeah. I wrote about him before I left mm-hmm. and moved back to Philly and um I told him I said it ended good, and he was like, "I don't care. I don't want to read all that. <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to know." But um, so there was always a sense of like, you know, there was I already trusted him. I knew him, and I knew a lot of like the issues we had when we were younger was so superficial and just like because we just didn't know how to date and each other, how to love each other, and communicate because we was kids, like mm-hmm. trying to be grown. So it was it was easy to like date him again and like get to know him all over again as a grown up as a man and then um, and as a like a father of like <clears throat> three because he grew a lot he was a single father he had a daughter when we were younger but um, we were still te- we were like teen parents so it's mm-hmm. different um, yes. but yeah but it worked out so now I'm married to the to the guy and he's great <laughs> I told somebody the other day he's um, my Alfred. To my Batman. <laughs> oh yeah, I love that. <laughs> because you, everybody think Batman got it all together, but Alfred like be holding it down. He be having every. He be he be keeping it together behind the scenes, and that's what he exactly. does. He keeps everything together because I be just out here living life, working. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, that is. And then you know when you're dating again. 
thinking about, you know, giving love a second chance. And if you're, you know, let, let's say you, you date a few people, you, you may be a little scared to do it. What about like discretion, like being discreet? I think that was one of our topics. What do you think about that? Like the art of discretion, I think is how we worded mm-hmm. it. Yes. So I come from that school of thought. I was raised that way, especially on my father's side of the family. And so what happens between like you and someone else is like between you two and you two discover and you two learn and, you know, allow for the mistakes and the grace and all of those things. I'm the type of person that like, if I would want to date or deal with anyone, it would need to be someone that actually respects discretion. Mm -hmm. And especially today with, um, you don't just have the grapevine anymore. You have social media. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, if a person like really can't handle or understand what should be posted and what shouldn't be posted, Mm. like that's like, that's a big deal for me. Like, that's just a big deal for me to be indiscreet is it's a way of respecting each other Mm -hmm. and kind of protecting and nurturing the relationship while it's going through its vulnerable stages without it being public display right Mm -hmm. and then once it gets to a strong space and then you everyone's ready to deal with the public because the public first thing they're going to want to do is well, how long have you been dating and how long have you known this mm-hmm. person and what where did y'all meet and da 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 so you have to have a, a standing firm foundation at some mm-hmm. point whoever you're dating or, you know that's able to um, deal with the public when public knowledge comes into play and then yeah. at the same time there should be discretion about your relationship in order for it to foster, to grow, to be loving and kind and harmonious. Everyone can't know everything that's happening with you and your partner. And that's mm-hmm. just ridiculous. And so I don't know how much it has changed. <laughs> Those are my expectations. <laughs> now, I think that's important to like say that, especially now with technology, I feel like it's even more important to like talk to like the person that you're dating and understand like what is acceptable and what's not and mm-hmm. not get butt hurt if the guy or girl doesn't want to post you all over their social media it doesn't mean or they follow you or follow yeah. you. Right. Right. It doesn't mean they don't want to be with you it just means that they know the people that that is either around them or close enough to them that could you know it could possibly cause issues or like you know they just don't you know you don't want to hear that feedback from people oh well like you said, where did you meet him at? Or how well, how do you know mm-hmm. he's this? And how do you know that? And a lot of people are meeting on social media, right? So like a lot of people, yeah. it's it's just a it's just very common. It's not taboo anymore to say that you met somebody through one of these dating yeah. apps or or they slid mm-hmm. into your DMs on Instagram. And yeah. I have a friend that <laughs> you she, video chat a stranger. Right. <laughs> I have a friend that, you know, she met her boyfriend on, uh, through a dating app and like for the first year, I don't even know if she's posted him yet. I got to go back and look at her social media, but I know for the first year, at least she did, they didn't post anything about each other. Like not even a hint that she was, they was out on a date together. Like if she and him was out somewhere, you would see her like taking pictures of herself and maybe him taking pictures of himself, but you would never see the two of them and you wouldn't be able to link them. Smart. And Mm. at first, like, you know, other people probably felt some type of way about it, but I told her like, y- y'all need time to focus on yourself without everybody else's opinion. Get to know each yeah, other. Do, do I really much. like him? You know, mm-hmm. maybe I only like him because my friends think like, oh girl, he is the one and he might not be the one. Or mm-hmm. your friends think he's not the one. And then you got that negative feedback in your head and you know, you haven't had an opportunity to really form your own opinion about him. So yeah. for her. So I feel like it's it's really important to like keep it off social media as much as mm-hmm. as much yeah, as yeah that that part yeah that I agree with that I mean when I started dating Stanley I remember just being nervous about the whole Facebook thing because he's you know big on Facebook and all the things and I'm like looking around because I ain't really I didn't really say anything because I people kind of handled me with kid gloves after my divorce I'm like oh you got to do you got the kids are you okay and I was out here doing things doing the stuff behind the scenes building a business working and so like I do know I guess my mom will find this out when she hears this episode yeah it was like eight months she didn't meet him for like eight months 
And she was like, when am I going to meet? I was like, well, just chill, just, you know, relax, you know. It was a minute because I was yeah. nervous and that was how I felt. I just didn't want all of that kind of feedback and mm-hmm. all the things. So it was just, and it, you know, being, I was, you know, 40 when I got divorced and there was some stigma associated with being, you know, with being 40 at the time and, oh, you're, you're older, you should be careful. And I'm just like, oh, okay. So I'm going to be real discreet. So I'm just be, I'm just going to be careful and just keep it to myself. And that's exactly what I did. And it was like eight months. And then finally, you know, I started telling people. But, it's so funny to me how invested people be in, in yeah. other people's business. Like you don't have no business. I don't get it. Like yeah. it's your own business. What are you doing now? Are you dating? Like, what? like shut up. Mind your business. Are you, get, are you guys getting married? I'm like, yeah. I've been hearing that a lot lately. Mm-hmm. One time I was on video and I was doing something and, um, it was with some people that I knew and I was just like, I'm listening. And I was like, just like put it on makeup or whatever. And then they're like, where are you going? Mm, what are you okay. doing? Wow. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I didn't answer it. Cause it was like, huh? but yeah, I'm in that space now where everyone's kind of nudging, mm-hmm. um, nudging me on. So what do you think about dating? What are you doing? You know, have you thought about love again? Do you want to get married again? You know, and that kind of stuff. And honestly, I don't really know all the answers yeah. for myself. So I don't, I don't, I just say, I don't know. Cause I don't know, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. I know that I miss company. Mm-hmm. I know that I miss male energy. I know that I miss simple things like watching a TV show, you know, yeah. um, Things that we, you know, sometimes maybe we don't, we don't take them as serious as beautiful moments. And I've never, I've never not taken my relationship serious, but it's still, I miss it. I miss it a lot. And so those are the parts, you know, that I miss, you know, having company and, you know, going out to eat together and that kind of stuff. So two years ago, if you would have asked me this question, I told everybody I was never dating again. <laughs> I was not getting married. And, you know, all of the things. And everybody was like, just give it time. Just give it time. Mm-hmm. And then I had an aunt that uh, uh, she was a young widow. She was a little bit older than me, though. She was 60, I think, when she lost her husband. And they were together since they were teens. Though. They were together longer. And, and she's actually my aunt through my husband. And she had this like long drawn out talk with me about a year ago about waiting too long and not letting a lot of time go by that, you know, he's not coming back and, you know, all of these things. And he would want you to be happy, would want you to be just, you know, doing you and knowing. And, and I recognize that I am I was born in 1969. I really consider myself a love child. (laughs) (laughs) I was that flower baby, you know what I mean? So I love and I love hard and I have a lot of love in me. And so I know that about me and I know how my husband would feel. So right now it's just a matter of processing those questions for myself Mm -hmm. and what does it mean today for me? I'm a dinosaur. I'm outdated. You know what I'm saying? With the ways of how things work, but I've also believed in my philosophy and um, certain standards that I will let go no matter what the world is doing out here. So it's just, it's well, a weird be, space to be in. It might be vintage, but you're not a dinosaur. Yeah, you're, you're not a dinosaur. Like, you guys like you're a fossil or something. Because they're you're not a fossil. <laughs> <laughs> appreciation that people have for vintage things and like yeah. the quality that comes with that so i feel like right. well, thank you. you are like the quality <laughs> people and like these especially these young people they just don't they have no clue like you mm. know what it means to have that type of love um for somebody i know like even like in talks with you when i came to visit you in cleveland like um i was gonna say last december december 2019 and we were talking you know just about love and marriage and i wrote and you know, my marriage and stuff. And it gave me a new appreciation for him and the things that he does. And like, just recognizing like, oh, this is the way he shows love. This is the way he apologizes. Like, Mm -hmm. don't argue, don't be upset because he doesn't, he can't say, oh, I'm sorry, because he has ways that he 
it's all in his actions. He's an action guy. He's definitely not a words guy. <laughs> <laughs> and so you taught me to, to like notice those small things about him and be more appreciative of him. So mm, that's you know, beautiful. I feel like yeah. you you're a vintage quality that people right like, oh, exactly. Yes, yes. Just like Thank that beautiful you. lamp is sitting that. next to you. But you're looking at this Thank video. You. My husband beautiful. called these. I have two of them Love on it. the other side here. But when we got them, my husband called it the Hibbets Way. This, those are, <laughs> see, just look, look at that. Yeah. See? Yeah, and I it, love that. He used to tell me that I was, because we were together when we were, I was 24 years old, 23. And he would tell me like year after year on my birthday, you 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 get more beautiful more gorgeous the older you get and he was like I hate to tell you this I know you think you look good now because you're young but you're gonna age like fine wine like you're going to be so gorgeous drop dead when you're older and I hate to tell you this but that's when your real beauty is gonna come out like <laughs> no not when I'm older <laughs> I can see that for sure y'all can't really see um, Shauna's body is the bomb first of all Thank she you. Holds, mm-hmm. like that that Angela Bassett, you know, mm-hmm. everybody's like, I need the Angela Bassett. You know? I need the Angela. I'll take one of those. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. That's my that's my goal. Work Every in progress. Put it out another ten years. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are more than fine. So you're good. Yeah. So we talk about trusting again. So like even we we talk about kind of the fundamentals of what we look for, what we've been through. So let's say you're past that, right? And you're we're we're today, we're living in the present, like Shauna reminds us of, and we love those reminders. How do you trust again at a at a time like this? So I know for me, I was just very clear and upfront from the beginning with Corey about look, if if this is not what you want at any point, just let me know. We can move on. Um, If I do something, be honest with me and I'm going to be the same with you. And then just always being a hundred percent, like we, you know, we ain't got to get married right away. Like even like what I knew, like the thought might've been there for a proposal. I was like, you know, you got to propose to me just because we didn't have a kid together. Like, (laughs) wait, I just want you to know that. And I know he was looking at me like, this chick is so crazy. Um, because it was, with well, my ex, it was like a couple months after we got married and we was having a conversation at a restaurant and we were both like, no, you wanted this. He said, no, you want I said, no, I didn't. And he was like, well, you said you wasn't living with nobody unless you were married. I said, exactly. And you chose to marry me because you wanted to live with me. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. laid out. Going into this next relationship, we need to be very clear about the reasons why we're doing what we're doing. And, yeah, and that's right. right. If this is not what you want, just be honest. I think for me, trust starts with like communication and being open and honest and being able to just say what you like, what you don't like. And if it's not, and if, and if this is not something you're willing to compromise on, then that's fine. We can move on from here. There's no, no love lost, but like, I want both of us to be totally okay with where we are in our marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally agree with that. I mean, I, I think I was very <laughs> open, very honest, which was which was kind of I'm I mean I'm an honest person, but I tend to be like, oh, okay, I kind of just go with the flow and everything's gonna be okay. And we're just gonna I remember these words. I, I remember telling Stanley, I'm probably gonna be the worst girlfriend. I'm not gonna be a good girlfriend. Cause at that time, Miles was starting ninth grade. And I was running around with AAU basketball. Maddie was seven. She was getting, she was starting to dance and all that. And I had my, I was starting my own business, you know, with the blog and all that. And then I'm work full time. I was like, I'm, I'm yeah. such, you know, now I'm terrible. I'm going to be a bad girlfriend. So it's up to you, you know. Uh, and every weekend I was running the streets because I had, you know, this kid thing to do, this other kid thing to do, my business, my work. But yeah, I mean, I was just, I think being up front, with that, it just helps solidify things because that's something I probably wouldn't. I probably would have tried to compromise. The old Linda would have tried to compromise the heck out of it, and I, I had to be honest with myself and say, "Okay, you need to be upfront with this man because your life is crazy, <laughs> crazy yes. in a good way." Mm-hmm. And I think I think that definitely helps. So that allowed me to be more open and not be afraid. Okay, if I'm not available, he's gonna leave. It's like, well, right. if he if he does, he does. You know, he already he knows. Yes, yeah, you did. let them know from the very yep. beginning. From and jump. I think that's mm-hmm. the important thing. That's the beginning of establishing trust mm-hmm. is 
knowing what your expectations are and what you want and what you desire and what you're willing to give in mm-hmm. return, you know, yeah. and then everybody has to decide. It's like a contract, you know, then everybody has to decide if that's the contract that they want to sign up for. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm I like, I go into it like, look, you got all the points on the board. If you, you the one that's going to start knocking them off and losing points, but I'm going to give you all the points and I'm going to go in this. And I'm going to trust you. And then we're going to build from there and see how it goes. But, um, you know, some people are a little more like, oh, well, you know, you shouldn't date such and such. Or like, even when it comes to friendships too, like, I'm like, okay, I don't, I'm not going to listen to a lot of what a lot other people say, unless it's just some major mm-hmm. stuff. Like, you know, he really got some issues. Then I'm like, oh, that's a red flag. Um, or if they mama is telling me he ain't no good, because then if they mama tell you that's a whole good, other thing, you, you should probably just move on. <laughs> yes, true <Through> that. <laughs> but I'm very trusting up front, and then you know, and then but I know how to get myself out if I'm if I'm like, oh yeah, this isn't working out. Exit mm-hmm. stage. I'm like, what you're saying, trusting up front. So I put all my cards on the table. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I. I trust myself that much that I don't need to like be all like I'm gonna take you for your word Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until you show me different. Yeah, that's the only time things change. Yeah, with Mm -hmm. trust, Mm -hmm. it's long. You know, I'm gonna take you for your word. I'm not gonna if you tell me something that happened, I'm gonna believe you. Right at the point at that point at the start, like there's no reason to be lying or fake mm-hmm. or coming up yeah. with reasons and excuses like it's there's nothing has happened for that to have to happen mm-hmm. unless you're bringing baggage you know and, and it will a lot of time that's what happens if you haven't worked out your baggage let me if tell you you didn't work it out up and it will show up and then you're gonna be like why can't i keep anybody because you ain't dealt with your stuff yeah exactly. right Right. And sometimes people don't realize that they're not, you know, they got to clean up some stuff before they start something new. And then you lose a lot of maybe great contenders because you weren't ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a great point. I I knew I needed time because people were like, oh, it's been two years. You're not seeing anybody. It's like, no, it's not your decision. I knew I needed the four years. Was was that maybe a little excessive? Maybe, but I knew I needed that time. And that was just me. And you were busy. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot, you know. It may sound like four years was, oh my God, it's a long time. It flew by you could though. take into consideration the young children mm-hmm. jumping into single parenthood that you never yeah. thought in your life that you was going to no, envision. Never Go through what you it. went through, whatever the personal circumstances were. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All of that was so much that you probably woke up and it was four years later. Yeah, it felt, I felt like I was just getting started. I felt like I was coming out of the fog, you know, there were some financial things. And I was like, oh man, like I felt that summer of 2015 or that spring of 2015, Miles had graduated from middle school and it was like, okay, this is feeling good, you know? So I, maybe that was the good part that was showing and that's how it came up. But though it, it didn't feel like four years, but it really was. And it just... I needed that time because I don't think I could have done it in six months or even. You a wouldn't year. be where you are right now because yeah, I had to rebuild. It took me a whole year just to get my footing because I remember I went to New Jersey for I think the, it was either because we split in January 2012. So I think it was either Thanksgiving or Christmas that year. I finally felt like okay, I can take a trip. I can go see family, and things are starting to lift a little bit. But I felt like I was still on not so solid ground just, you know, emotionally and just, you know, making sure the kids have what they need, making sure I had what I needed and, and all that. So it was part of that time was healing nonetheless, but I, I feel like I needed that time. And some people do it faster. Some people, if some people it is six months. Some, some people, people don't even girl. think about it. They some people don't even think about it. I'm like, hey, for real though? I'm like, all right, girl, do you, if you need some support, I got you. But I know I took four years, but maybe that's a little excessive. We can, can we do the median is two years, but well, you know. Because some, some, some people, they they spent four years basically not in a real relationship. They just been playing. That's like, true. Yeah. That's true. They would they had checked out four years ago. So yeah, that, yeah. those are the ones that come out and be like, oh yeah, I'm I'm with somebody. Like, cause you checked like, out four years ago. You yeah. remember? Right? <laughs> yeah. Y'all haven't dated each other in four years. <laughs> I know. So yeah, it's yeah, it's definitely a process. And I, I think you just have to take 
the time for yourself. I think taking time for yourself is key. Yeah. What that time frame is for you, you have to have that settled spirit. And I don't like feeling anxious. And I know anxious feels like it's like butterflies either in your chest or your stomach. If you're feeling that way when you're approaching a relationship yes. or the dating scene, or you're thinking about, you know, telling the person I love you or giving that love a second chance, try to try to do some things to settle it a little bit because then it'll, yeah, it'll come back on you. You don't want that. It will. And it will show in your behavior. Mm -hmm. It will show in your attitude in life. And uh, if, if it will be, crystal clear if you had not taken the time to get to know you all over again because whether you're coming away from a marriage or uh, a breakup or in my situation um, loss of spouse now you have to re now you have to relearn yourself all over again mm -hmm. away from that person and the situation and the circumstances because you you may have been in a long-term relationship long enough where, you know, part of you was in that relationship. Mm -hmm. So now that you're coming yeah. away from it, it's like just moving on and jumping on as if nothing happened, you yeah. know, it's mm -hmm. not healthy. And um, you don't need to have people scrutinize you or tell you how healthiness needs to look. We're just saying that you wanna make sure you take the time for yourself yeah. to know yourself well enough so when you do go back out there mm -hmm. you know how you want to pick and choose yeah yeah so That's how right. has um how did being a single mom affect dating for y'all mm. <laughs> there's a lot of different views out there on like you know yeah dating with kids and what things to do and things not to do yeah, I think that played a lot into my four years, honestly. I mean, with the kids, I mean, part of it, most of it was me, but it was them too. And just, you know, knowing that they, they were young, they were 10, Miles was 10, Maddie was three. So with that, those are like the, the years, I mean, their, their personalities have formed or forming, you know, it just, they were going with their daddy every other weekend. So that was like, uh, I didn't know if I wanted anybody to be around and it was just really, really tough. But I think I just didn't want, you know, a bunch of folks around my kids. That was the other part of it. Yeah, that was really the biggest thing I think. And then that, it wasn't a roadblock, I would say. It was more of me kind of putting up the barrier because I was trying to protect yeah. you know, what myself, what's ours, you know, what's me and the kids trying to protect the kids per se. Mm -hmm. And I think that that played, that played a huge part in it, just being a mom. Cause I, you hear the stories, you, you may have friends and family members that go, have mm -hmm. gone through certain things and, you know, being with different people and things like that. I did not want that for, for me or for them. Definitely not. What about you, Shauna? Now, I know that was a long time ago for you because TJ is a grown man. I remember <laughs> it well. Is. I remember it well because it involved Lorenzo. Mm -hmm. So TJ was five um, when I met Lorenzo. And I kept him away. I don't think he met Renz for about six to nine months. Almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quite a while. Quite a while. So I would get a babysitter. Mm -hmm. every time we went out on a date and he would ask me questions about him and I would talk to him about his personality and like that but I didn't cross the two what I didn't want was I didn't want um Mia's here Okay, you playing games. I'm not going to deal. Um, <laughs> she's going like this y'all. She wants to oh. come on me and she doesn't want to. <laughs> Mia. But I didn't want Right. I didn't want my son to become attached to someone and then it didn't work out. And I know that you can't predict that it could, things could fall apart years later, but I wanted at least, you know, a good solid amount of time with the person that understood that I was a single mom and understood the importance of that and what part they can play in that. Um, the good news was Lorenzo had a son. We both had a child. So that was, that was good, but I still took time to make sure yeah that's important it was the same with Navon when she was little when I had first when I first met Corey Navon was only two and so mm -hmm. her and his daughter both were two years old when we met um at 24 now but um mm -hmm. it's just so crazy it seems like 
it wasn't that long ago, but it was so long ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it was a little bit before they met and, you know, actually, you know, was around each other. She probably had no clue who he was. Cause I was, I was the queen of like dating somebody for a summer while she was away at either like her dad's um, mom's house for the summer or something like that. And then summer be over and I'd be like, summer, summer, oh. summer time. <laughs> I know, <I'm> back. <laughs> I don't think. You know, like that was enough. Like that was like two and a half months. It's like that was enough for me to judge whether or not I wanted to keep you around longer and meet my child. Um, so he, I, I mean, that. Corey made the cut, of course, but um, just like dating other guys in between there. But like, I can't imagine like with the amount of kids that we have now, if something was to ever happen to our relationship, which I pray it never does. Um, for you know, and then any unforeseen things, but I can only imagine like with my girl's personality. They would not be having it. They would be like, who is this? I'm telling my daddy, like, mm. Ryan can be really rude what she want to be, especially if she just, she is not a, a nice people person all the time. And I can see her now like, mm, I guess, like, whatever. <laughs> she did it to her, her older sister's boyfriend now. Even oh, the one, wow. her sister that's engaged, she like, I mean, I guess. I was like, he's going to be your brother, like your brother-in-law. She was like, oh, no, I have enough brothers. You're good. Like so I can only wow. imagine if I was like to date somebody else like after Corey, why these girls were still young. Yeah. It would oh, not. She wrote. <laughs> Which is why I'm glad I'm resolved to like not get married again ever again in life. If this does not mm-hmm. work, out. <laughs> he said, you know what he told me? He was like, I mean, I was always say okay with um your ex husband being at your house all the time. I was like, what? He said my. <laughs> If oh my god, they're gonna hilarious. be at the house all the time. I was like, oh god, this is- <laughs> y'all sound like one of them TV shows. Like, <laughs> which one? It's a couple of those. Oh, there was one like that. It was, yes, uh, yes. <laughs> the Marlon Wayne's had one too, but there was another one before that. Mm. Um, Marlon Wayne's TV show was like that, so yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not, it's possible to date with children, but I think you just have to use a lot of discretion. You, you do, you do. And it, it can be hard because like, you know, you, you kind of have those conversations, those moments where the kids, they, they come first. In, in my opinion, I, I just feel like that, you know, because things come up, things happen. Yeah, you want to grow your relationship, but when something happens that could affect them or you've got to be there for your kids, yeah I, I just that's just me I, I I'm there I'm like I'm sorry but you, you kind of knew this up front <laughs> I, I told you this is what it is now I haven't, I haven't been right every time I will admit so, <laughs> I, I have been wrong right sometimes she said she hasn't been right all the time I've been right all the time with that but you know I I erred on the side of you know making sure the kids were good and I think yes. now that they're older it, it is it's a little you know it's, it's been better but, but it's yeah, still right man respects that right they respect yeah. that you have mm-hmm. that type it's... of love and care for your kids because you know if you're someone that's dating with the intention of marrying someone and having more kids they're going to mm-hmm. want to know that that's the type of mother you'll be for like their kids yeah. as well or if they have kids of their own like they'll admire those those qualities yeah you. I wasn't sure if that was going to be the case here because I pre- I thought Stan was I'm tired of you taking them kids to them damn basketball games and you know every weekend I'd be traveling gone this this and even still now Miles is in college and he's playing that was not my intention to go to the games when he started college but then we went to the first one and I couldn't stop going and then he was starting and I'm like oh my god I have to be here you know so it's just you know I think we sometimes maybe we underestimate um, the partnership yeah on the compromising end on, mm-hmm. you'd be surprised at, um, I don't know, I know as moms, you are so overprotective. Mm-hmm. And I think that sometimes we don't give enough credit to the partner that we're involved in. And yeah. a lot of times they get it. They wouldn't be there if they didn't. So well, that's, that's true. Yeah, I didn't think that at first. I have to admit, we have to give them the thought, opportunity. Well, let me tell you, and, Stanley. And not make the decision bye, for Bye-bye. <laughs> Stanley, bye-bye. <laughs> What he wanted, <laughs> and he he held in there, and he just waited, just waited. Yes, he did. He was you know, old man to go fishing. They just be sitting out there on the water. You know, That's he, him. He don't catch nothing. He just sitting in that. He boat. said, "Look, he <laughs> said this is a good couch. catch. This is a good catch. I'm gonna sit here and <laughs> I'm gonna sit here." Don't and it's, nobody it's interesting don't how nobody that works out. Sound. No, nobody. Right, that's him. That's so. Nobody that's moves, the fishing bowl nobody is the couch. So. Hurt. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, you said in another episode, Linda, like food. He knew. He knew the way. He knew that you liked it. He knew you liked oh food. 
Yes, food. TV and right. movies. TV and movies. Yep, yep. And and he he fixes stuff like you're I mean, a basketball really mom. Good. Like you're yeah. like the best. Basketball oh, thank moms you. are the thank best. You. They're into sports. They they mm-hmm. I mean they usually like more than one sport. And mm-hmm. yeah. Guys love that. They I think I like breakfast. sports more than Stanley. Like even with the basketball stuff, I started watching a little MMA. Like we'll do that. So he loved. That's his thing. He loves that. But yeah, it's fun. You know, I do like football's my thing, and you know basketball is just kind of like I can sit on. I sit on the couch with you. Maybe you sit on the couch. Yeah, you know, t-shirts on, drinks, food. If if I get mad, he'll know. He'll go buy me some food. I'm like, oh, I'm good. Oh, we good now. Okay, you know, mm, nice love language. <laughs> well, that's a. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's my love language. Yeah, that's my love language. Yeah. He said food. He was like, "Is it sex?" I'm like, "No, it's food." Okay, go. Yeah, we're good. Mm-hmm. He was like, mm, mm. <laughs> "I know it's food." Just text. look. I was like, "Just text me. We good." <laughs> hey, good. Just drop off a plate. I'm good. Yes, yeah, just that's text how you, me. That's how men uh, can get get a woman to speak to him again. Ask her if she's hungry. <laughs> You hungry? There you yeah. go. Oh, I've there heard you know. that before. I I've love heard food. that before. Mm-hmm. Wine yes. and dine, baby. Take me out and give me some wine, a nice glass Gosh. of wine, and a nice restaurant with dim lights. Yeah. And oh, yeah. 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 I think you just have to communicate. Knowing that is like half the battle, you know. Yeah, yeah. Was like I think he worked late one day. Came, you know, came in. And I was like, no, I guess we're not going out because you were there. He was like, you want to go to Coastal Flats? I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I popped right out. He said, oh, you got up for that? I said, we got dressing with the Coastal Flats, and it was great. Yes. It was fabulous. I'm with you, yeah. Linda. I love to eat. Like, <laughs> I love to eat. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah, so Sorry. finding those moments. Looking at oh those moments are great. Oh, Ooh, dating. Cool. I'm just yeah, I'm just I don't want to have to do it again. I just I'm gonna say that though. Shout it's a rough out to space. All you, um, it's a rough Nevis. space. Women and men out here on this dating scene. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I never thought I would see myself here. It is scary. <laughs> I remember my husband and I used to talk about it. We used to hold on to each other, like, oh, we're so glad we don't have to be out there with the we call it the meat ma- the meat market. Meat market. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, I don't want none of that. Never envisioned like, this. Can you touch on or give some comments as you're like trying to like think about getting back out there and dating again? One is a like you said, a widow or someone who's been married for so long and haven't hasn't had to date and think about it for a while and a woman that's 50 like you know what is it like out there for you what tips can you have give to like you know Mm. I think you have to stick to your guns as far as like your philosophy your belief systems Um, but you also I think you also need to and this is what I'm working on with my mind because I could be a bit rigid. <laughs> what? Not the really? I could be just a little bit rigid, as artistic and flowery and yes, as I am. I could be rigid when it comes to some things. And I think giving yourself grace to be open. Have fun. Have fun. Mm-hmm. And not not always go into something with an expectation. Oh, it's just going to end in a ring. It's just going to end in an engagement. Because the problem with being in a relationship for so long with one person is that you're conditioned to be mm. treated a certain way. You're conditioned to do certain activities. You're con- like little things like communicating where you're going to and from. If you're starting to date off with somebody, you can't expect that person to be letting you know where they at all the time. You know what I'm saying? So it's like stuff like that. Like you have to unwork <laughs> some gotta, of those you gotta work things that, that you for real. To yep. and and understand what you're dealing at hand. And it's I think tough. just going in as a friendship that I think that's the way whenever I'm pre- ready or prepared to jump out there, I have to put the friendship hat on and just be like, just kicking it just friends and with no expectations and see where it leads yeah and I think that's the key because I think a lot of women when they get to a certain age like you know some of my friends are like that are four in their 40s or higher they're like oh like you know 
almost like they have to take what they can get because the possibility that it may never happen again for them. And it's mm-hmm. like, no, you can just literally have fun. You ain't got to take, like, you don't have to settle. Like, you don't, yeah. you know. And you you can date and be up front with people and let them know, like, I'm just dating and having fun. I have no, I do not want a relationship. So if that's what you're looking for, you should probably look somewhere else. Right. <laughs> and it's okay to date a few people. That. Mm-hmm. It's okay to date a few people and be open about it. And yeah. just, you know, there, you know, you don't have to be, you know, like open, open, like descriptions or anything like that. But, yeah. you know, the person needs to know that they're not like the only contender. Like, the, mm-hmm. the, you know what? I, I am accepting applications and <laughs> whichever <laughs> one I feel, you know, I'm going to spend my yeah. energy or time with that's the route I'm going to go. Mm-hmm. And I think as women in general, like, regardless of age like be okay with like putting it out there like look i'm not looking to marry you i'm like i don't have an agenda and if like this is what you're looking for like you know like i think there's an expectation that all women are looking to get married and settle down and it's true it's not true it doesn't have to be that you know Mm -hmm. and a lot of men don't know how to act when a woman is like um you know if a man asks why are you talking to other people yeah i am i just met you of course Mm -hmm. i am Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how I met you. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Take a number. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, and then also, like, you know, I say this a lot, but like, men, it's okay. Like, if you, you know, if if you, if she ain't the one, then move on. Like, don't don't worry mm-hmm. about her feelings. You yeah. need to be happy too. Right. That's Everybody true. needs to be happy. Yes. But yes. Just not one sided. Like, just don't like you know don't be deceitful like just be honest right. up front mm-hmm. and be like look no i'm not looking to settle down yes i am dating yeah. other people if you can hang with that then hang with it i think women will respect you more for that than like being uh, being deceitful about the things that you're doing so yeah agree yep if her feelings get hurt then she might just be too sensitive for you anyway so she might mm-hmm. not be the one <laughs> yeah she might not be the one for you yeah just be up front just be honest like yeah definitely Yes. And if you oh. made a mistake, can you just apologize? I know. Ugh. That's a whole nother episode. That's a yeah. whole, whole, whole nother It's episode. just, yeah, for sure. Yes. And yeah, have the last word. One of our book recommendations. <laughs> Commons book, Let Love Have the Last Word. Oh, yeah. He yes. did some serious work. Yeah, talk about he that. Did. Like, he did some serious work on himself and, you know, with his expectations and dating and what mm-hmm. he thought and how he shut down really good book yeah Um, it is good it's a really i did the audio Mm because i wanted him to read it to me yeah same here he did it with elegance and i like the the music um interludes in there yes that was awesome nice yeah Yeah. i got a nice touch and the audio so oh do do you okay i have the audio very very just did the audio T heartbeats they're really 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 good love the way he told the story and how he you know weaved in the, the parts of love so check it out if you haven't had a chance mm-hmm. it's amazing yes and also don't be too hard on yourself give yourself grace we all make mistakes right so yeah just if you meet somebody and they're up front with you and it's like whoo you're touching your pearls because he said he's dating other people or she's dating other people just if it doesn't set well with you it's okay to step back and you know don't don't keep trying to force them or turn them or mold them into you know the person that you are let them be who they are mm-hmm. yes yeah that's sure. 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 Little blocks, and maybe it's you do some self. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and right, and you can journal about it. Shauna has our beautiful Ignite Your Fuego journal behind her there. And if you're watching this video, <laughs> yes, go ahead, Shauna. If you're watching this video, you'll see the beautiful <laughs> journal. You can journal about it. You can write your feelings down, and you can also wear that with your heartbeat T-shirt. Any of our swag and our apparel. It will make you, you know, just bring it all home for you when we're talking about love and relationships. So love it so much. Shauna is doing a great job of acting out (laughs) all of the things that I'm saying here. (laughs) Yes. If you are just listening, you're like, what are they laughing at? What are they laughing at? Who's laughing? Who's 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 laughing? laughing? Oh, that's you, girl. That's you, girl. Okay. Okay. Anyway, (laughs) we have to give a plug to our our, one of our favorites. I love that show. Love Love them. Love them. What'd you say? Coming back. I can't wait. Yes, Insecure Season 5 is coming back. They just wrapped up. 
awesome. I oh. all know all the details. I know. Is that something? They, they did. I, I was watching it on Twitter over the weekends. Amazing. Yeah, I know. I know way too much about that. Anyway, yes, you saw our journal, our heartbeat shirts. We love you. Love you, heartbeats. Amazing. Shauna, do you want to tell our heartbeats and our listeners where they can find us, how they can connect with us? Yes, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, IG, and our website at the Heart of Chat. And don't forget to come back next week, everybody, because it's going to be Fuego, baby. Come back. Yes. Bye, ladies. Bye, ladies. Thank you. Love you, ladies. Bye.